Our lives used to look like this. For years, we got to travel the world, touring with the band I was in. At the same time, we raised chickens and gardened at home in Nashville. Then we changed everything and moved to my hometown to start a little farm by the beach. Now our lives look more like this. We're still learning this farmy lifestyle one sweaty mess at a time, and we're inviting you to learn with us. I'm Nina. And I'm Brendan. And this is Farm to Table. Welcome to the farm, my friends. We are out here. It's been raining all morning, but the sun just came out and I heard something. Did you hear that frog? <laughs> Every time I come out here, it's just a new experience. It feels like we're in the wild, but we're still so close to town. This land feels really special. Everybody that comes here sort of has the same reaction. Some friends got here the other day and they got out of their minivan with all their kids and I walked out to say hi, and they were all whispering. I was like, why are you whispering? And they said, it just feels so peaceful. We don't want to interrupt the peace. This is the garden. So everything here is to scale. The garden is about as big as the house. <laughs> the goats are going here. So yeah, our plans are to get 12 heritage breed chickens and tractor them around the property so they can constantly be getting fresh grubs, fresh worms, um, be picking out the bad bugs out of the ground and fertilizing the ground everywhere they go. Um, we're gonna get a few goats, we're gonna get a donkey. We're gonna board a few horses because the barn has a few stalls and hopefully convince some friends to buy horses so that I can take care of them. Not interested. There used to be cows on this property for a long time and we hoped to get cows again by the end of the year and the cows would go swimming in the summer <laughs> in the pond. So that's the dream is to come out here and see a few cows taking a little swim on a hot summer afternoon. So Brendan and I are moving out here in two weeks. The house renovation is almost done. There was mold, termites, ants, water damage, holes in the roof. Um, it was a hot mess, but they've been working really hard and we feel really good about living in this space for a long time. is just to have bonfires all the time with our people and invite strangers, invite friends, invite um, people to get married here, people to have little retreats here, people to camp out if they want to, just to kind of experience uh, the land in a way that I've grown to love, this sort of agricultural life with huge gardens and canning and preserving, and sharing meals and yeah, that's our heart to just invite people here and have a place for our family to grow up as we have little garden babies. I can see their little naked butts already just running through, picking kale and pulling carrots out of the ground. Um, so yeah, feeling good.
Oh boy. Be natural. <laughs> Welcome back to the farm, my friends. A lot has happened since the last time we talked. We live here now and we finished renovating this house, moved in in May. It's been sort of like living at summer camp that we look out every morning over the sunrise while we're eating breakfast. Brendan and I on the front porch and get to watch the sun come up and all the water birds fly into the pond. The chickens start running around, the rooster's crowing. I never want to leave, like literally to go to the grocery store. I'm like, oh man, I have to leave the property. <laughs> I love this space. It feels right when I'm out here alone, just working, planting. We put in uh, tangerine trees, avocado, mango, lemon, pineapple, banana, zucchini, tomato, peppers, everything, herbs, celery. Uh, we're growing it all. And it also feels right when we're out here with 30 people, like we were the other night for Thanksgiving. At this table, with all our friends from here, from Nashville, some of our friends came down. A very special thing to invite people to this property and have it feel like some sort of cohesive, finished product, at least for our infrastructure. The house feels settled, the barn is renovated, the garden is done. Um, the property is sort of back up and running. Before, it was overrun with fire ants and uh, the ground was uneven and there was flooding in some places so we sort of restored a lot of that. Here we go. Everybody in our neighborhood practices some form of agriculture. We live in this really cool middle part of town where we're between the really developed strip mall section and the boonies, where our land is still zoned agricultural residential. So you have the right, the ability to raise cows, horses, chickens, goats, um, citrus groves, honeybees, whatever you want. There's no restrictions on agriculture. So, we're getting cows. <laughs> we're going to see two out of the five that we're getting in two weeks. We're rebuilding fences and um, putting irrigation out in the field to be able to get the water hoses to their water troughs. I'm ready for this. I am ready for cows. This feels like a massive upgrade from chickens. I've only ever had chickens. But you know what this also means is we need a dog. I feel like this might be a never ending cycle that we're about to start. We're gonna put five cows on this five acres next door and kind of rotate them throughout the property. I'm determined to conquer the hearts of cows. <laughs> the farmer that we're getting them from, he rings a bell and brings out some sweet feed and they run right over to him and he can scratch their heads, their cute little ears. Oh, she's coming. The more animals, the better. The chickens are doing great. They're back out there behind me. We ordered 10 hens, one of them grew and grew and grew and grew. And he's a rooster. He's not, he's not fitting in quite like we hoped. Ah! Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Back up, back up, back up. Uh, I have to put him in his place regularly because he kind of comes at you. But living here has been a joy and I feel reconnected um, on both sides of my family and in Brendan's family. 
We have farming in our history, like generations back. So it feels like this ancient privilege to get to live this agricultural lifestyle again and wake up with the sun and water the garden and check on the animals. And um, I want to be here as much as possible. I always want to build gardens, but have that be in tandem with the work that we're doing here on the farm and inviting people here. This has been our dream <laughs> for a long time. Uh, but all the projects that have happened around us, like don't get me wrong, we've worked harder than we ever have in our lives for everything that we see around us, but our community has showed up. Everything has been a group effort. Um, when our friends found out that we were building these beds on a Saturday, they came and brought lunch and brought tools and helped us lift all this lumber from here to there. Everything has become this big group project and the energy has been incredible. Everything hopefully from here on out will just continue to be the same, where we get to keep welcoming people for rest and inspiration and relaxation. But we've found so much joy in inviting people to also work and to get their hands dirty and to sweat and to stain 15,000 pounds of lumber with us. Um, unexpected joys in that sense, but that's been my favorite part. Please put the blooper of you falling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so glad this wasn't barbed wire. I know. Can you imagine? Ah! I talked about chickens in our wedding vows. Literally in our wedding vows. <laughs> I promised to get chickens as soon as we possibly could. Eight days after we got married, we were on the road with Brendan's band, just boom, on the bus. We lived with like 10 other dudes in a 40 foot bus, five days a week. <laughs> so we did that for four years and it was so fun. Brendan was the keyboard player and I worked for an organization called Compassion, which was a partner of the band and loved that work. To travel and see new places, meet new people, and see the world. Such a huge opportunity and really grateful for it. There was a show in Finland, so the rest of the guys were there for like 24 hours, but we flew early with some other friends in the band to like be in Iceland for a few days. I was gonna start singing the national anthem of Iceland, but I have no idea what it is. We went to London and then Paris and then Switzerland. Ah. Just making the most out of every single opportunity was looking back the best part of the experience and the meaningful work that we were doing was really special. Traveling, playing music, not just any music, but music with weight that helps people, encourages people, gives people hope. It's something I've wanted to do my entire life from when I was a little kid. So when I had the thought and desire to come off the road, it was really surprising to me. I remember that night, Brendan said, I think we should move to South Florida. I panicked. And I was like, oh my gosh, what did you just say? To think of changing everything was so overwhelming. Our jobs, where we lived, thinking about starting a family, like, whoa. A year from now, everything will be different. We kind of went from the adventure with the band to creating our own. I've known Brendan for over a decade now. Uh, we were bandmates for that entire time. I think the first time I met him was at like a tryout, the only uh, audition we ever had for our band. 
very quickly we realized we had one of the most wonderfully weird people you could ever care to meet. Ooh, look at this guy. So my wife over there took a trip to Panama with her nature club in high school. She said they ate termites. I don't know what this thing is. I'm not gonna eat that, but she said the termites, they ate them and they tasted like peppermint. They're so delicate. A little crunchy. Doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> might have been a type of ant. <laughs> might have been a type of ant? I'm over here eating termites. Definitely doesn't taste like peppermint. We loved our time on the road and our jobs that we had with the band, but at home, Brendan was working on real estate projects and renovating old junky houses um, in town, and I was working on farms and learning a ton. We were helping friends start gardens. I was starting to have that be my full-time work of building gardens for other people, and it works out perfectly that I grew up here in South Florida. My dad has been a builder for his whole career, and Brendan fits really well into that. And then I get to garden full-time here, which is so fun. I don't know anyone who's met Nina and started talking about gardening that didn't eventually go, hey, will you help me build a garden, Nina? Because she kind of like bewitches you. My wife's super into organic foods and said, Nina, you gotta help me build my own garden. We did vegetable plants and then Nina helped fill in these boxes here. So like this tree, Nina planted this tree right here. It's growing wonderfully. So I met Brendan when he was in the band and he was traveling and he was doing a bunch of radio shows. They would go from station to station. And I remember at the time, I think I may have even asked the band about this, just like, how do you keep traveling? I remember having a deep discussion with him and other guys from the band about that, just the, the toll that that can take on you. And I think people idealize being on the road or being a free agent or just traveling. You know, I want to go wherever I want to go. I want to look. It, it is cool for a little bit, but then you want to have a place and you want to be able to have a place where you invite other people into it. And I think that's what Brendan and Nina have done, honestly. It's, it's, not only make a place for themselves, but make a place where other people have a place too. And I think there's something really beautiful about that. Meet our welcoming committee. They are a little scraggly. There's a few absent. They're palm trees. <laughs> And this is what you get to see as soon as you come in the farm. There used to be a huge, disgusting pond, like three feet from the house. There was a sure death if you were to fall to the bottom like of it. A child eater. It was... a little child walks up to it, checking it out. Down the hill, into the green slime, never to be seen again. And now it is this. We built raised beds because the soil on our farm is white beach sand. We're in South Florida, it's pretty typical, but to grow the amount of food that we want to, we had to bring in organic compost soil. This is what I do for work, is build gardens like this for people in their backyards. We planted tons of veggies, we have fruit trees everywhere, and there's a big old table down the middle of this garden so that we can eat the food that we grow in the middle of the food that we're growing with all our people. All right, right here we have one of the two avocado trees on the farm. No avocados yet, but she's, uh, she's percolating. She's getting ready, percolating, right? That's the scientific word? Not But exactly we're amidst sure. <laughs> the garden, amidst the garden. And we have a food forest surrounding the garden. So we have two avocado trees, citrus. So with citrus, we have Tangerine. tangerines, oranges, Honey bells, lemons, the best. Limes, lemons. we don't have a lime tree. Uh, we have lychee, 
We have Barbados cherry. Mulberry. Mulberry. Mangoes? Did we say mangoes. that? Mangoes. It's gonna be delectable. So much good food. Probably hundreds of pounds a year once everything's up and running. Really? But it's gonna take a second. Hundreds. Come, hundreds of pounds. Hundreds. Like Come more on. than we can handle, for sure. Plenty to share. We're in the barn, and this place used to be a disgusting apartment. Yeah, there's holes all through the metal roof, and there were termites, and there was mold, water damage. So we wanted to save it. We wanted to have some friends live here. But as you can see, it's wide open, because that plan didn't work. Painted it white, and this is what it is. Hangout Central. And then we have the pool, which is this guy's favorite place on the farm. Love it. He uses the pool every single day. Um, Speedo? <laughs> we can't go tempting everyone oh. <laughs> with such information. Only one or two times. Right, right, right. I talked about chickens in our wedding vows. Do you remember that? What? Uh, my vows about chickens in our wedding. Literally in our wedding vows. I promised to get chickens as soon as we possibly could because I was so excited to raise the little baby chicks, which we did. Um, we've done a few times. And so our farm here, we started with 10 chicks and built this big old coop. Brendan and his dad built this from scratch from a pencil sketch that I did on graph paper. And it turned into weeks and weeks and weeks of work. It has hurricane straps. This thing is a beast. We had a category five hurricane coming towards us last year and we weren't worried for one second. This coop was gonna be fine. Um, we have chickens, mostly for the eggs. Ladies are lagging a little bit. There's a few. We already collected five today. Oh. So that's pretty good. Great job, ladies. <laughs> Keep it up. We love having chickens because we tractor them around the property. So this coop is on wheels and we attach it to the Jeep or we just pull it around. The chickens eat the bad bugs, they fertilize the grass, they fertilize the trees. We usually put them around a tree because over time those trees do really, really well and grow a ton. This chicken coop is a beast. Good work. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Dad. We got cows. We got cows. I can't even believe it. The people that lived before us had cows and these fences were no good. <laughs> So all our neighbors when we moved here said, are you guys getting cows again because you need to fix your fences because they'd run down the road. So we made sure to have mostly secure fences before we decided to bring these ladies onto the farm. How many ladies does this make? We have six plus nine plus one plus one. Math. 49. You are the only guy, big. We got some fish and turtles in the pond too. Once in a while, an alligator, literally. Um, so there might be some males in there. When the cows got here, they ran away from us and stayed in the far corner of the property for days. Like they wouldn't even come within sight of us. Our goal was to conquer the heart of cows. And with horse treats, I think we're doing pretty good. Now we're best friends. Hey, uh, what's their name? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luna, come here. Brendan always does this thing where he pretends to eat what he's trying to feed our animals. Mm. Like mm. what you do with a one-year-old. Oh, oh, wow, it really works. Her, <laughs> her tongue is like sandpaper. This is what we got so far. We are growing with the farm, so as we get better, we can add and add and add and add. I feel like we need a lot more animals. <laughs> Hi. Hey, pretty girl. What's up? Working. I'm out here with Rye. Hey. <laughs> we're filming the end of our video. Should we tell them that we're having a baby? There's all the pooping in the background. Great. Is this a good guy? Don't know. I've never seen anything like that before. It's beautiful. He's, oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> all right, he flies apparently. Right, we're giving you some real gold, buddy. 
Got some good stuff, some good material to work with. This season on Farm to Table. If we're talking about the soil, we have to cook root vegetables. We're making beet butter. This morning we are building a compost pile. We're just using what we have. I told Nina I was into her after pouring out my heart. She goes, uh, I need some time, bye. <laughs> Having baby chickens is not complicated, but it is a commitment. Always make sure your leaves are never touching the soil. We're cooking the rest of the food on a fire. 